Hey church, a huge hello to you from home, from lockdown. I hope you're doing really well and uh, you're managing uh, through this season. Maybe some of you have enjoyed some new relaxed rules for those of you that are vaccinated. Um, but we really just wanted to take time to gather again like we do every week in our online service. My name is Emma along with my husband Joel with the lead pastors here of Hope City KL. And it is our honor to have you watching today, whether it's live or on demand, then you are really welcome to this moment of worship, this time that we take each week to gather together to just focus on Jesus, focus on God, bring praise and thanks to him, remind ourselves of his goodness and have him speak into our world. And so we're expecting all of that for you guys today, whatever your situation is, whatever it is uh, that you've come into this service with on your mind, feeling on your shoulders, uh, weighing down in your heart, we're really believing that God's gonna speak right into it. Hopefully that's been your story over this last month as we've explored this series, There's Grace For You. And it's been a really powerful couple of weeks as we've uh, seen how God's grace uh, goes deep, goes far, goes wide, that uh, it is just powerful. It changes things um, and that we can live in a revelation of his grace leading to our forgiveness and our freedom. And so it's been an amazing series. Catch it up on YouTube if you've missed any of the parts, but make sure you click like, share today so that your friends, your family, people around your world can uh, be impacted by today's service. We're in for a great one because we've got a special guest and I'll introduce him in a little while. But first up, like always, it's time for worship and uh, our team has been busy in lockdown preparing this moment for us. Why don't we open our hearts to God? Uh, just take a moment to let the lyrics sink in, speak them out, sing them out, shout them out. Uh, let's bring some praise and adoration to our incredible God right now. Lost with the broken heart You picked me up, now I'm set apart From the ash I am born again Forever safe in the Savior's hands You are more than my words could say I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days I'll fix my eyes, follow you Forever free in unending grace Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending Oh, oh, oh You are lighting this Nothing can take your place You are home Your son, darling, set me free. Everything of this world will fail. I'm pressing on till I see your face. I will leave that your will be done. I will stop till your kingdom come. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher. You are, you are, you are 
Heavenly Father, we bring Malaysia before you. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your provision, your blessing and your favour upon our land. We believe in greater things are still to come 
We believe in miracles and in turn around where hope seems lost. We ask for clear vision and clear direction as we move into the next year. We ask for more of your spirit and to be filled by you. May your direction and your wisdom lead us and our fellow Malaysians. Lord, we ask for restoration. Restoration of the economy, of families, and of relationships, of hope, of trust, and of peace. But most of all, Lord, help us see the need that is around us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to stand in the gap and to help those who need our help. Thank you for constantly showing us that it is more blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for the gift of friendship. And thank you for the gift of community and for families. Thank you for the year 2021. Amen. 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 Oh, how good is it to pray for Malaysia? And uh, maybe you can watch that on repeat this week. We'll make sure that we get it out on our platforms. But we want to keep Malaysia in prayer, don't we? We're believing for its greatest days yet, for the power and presence of God to sweep across this land and do incredible things in the hearts of the people that call this place home. And if you're watching this, likelihood is you're in Malaysia. I know there's some people from around the region uh, checking this service out. A huge hi to you. And uh, if you've never been to Malaysia, come to Malaysia as soon as you're allowed. Um, but we need to keep Malaysia in prayer over its government, over its healthcare workers, over its teachers, children, families, the people of Malaysia, and not just for their prosperity and strength, but for their salvation to be found in Jesus Christ. And so that's our heart as a church is that we would get that message out to as many people as possible. And so let's pray. Let's be fervent in our prayers because it avails much. And we all know that things change when we pray and so we want to be a diligent church to come before God humbly in prayer asking boldly uh, and seeing him outwork miracles through our lives so let's continue to hold Malaysia in prayer especially in this season we're going to take a moment right now to take up our tithes and offerings so there should be some details coming up on the screen you can scan that QR code if you're a made bank account user or you can use the bank details to give through your online banking app um, but just while we do maybe I can share a story but um, a while back my son was playing in our home and I'm going wild, Henry, he's uh, four years old now, and he's a wild one at times, <laughs> usually after he's had some cake and a bit of sugar. Um, but he was playing actually with a friend in our house and was running around, I think it might have been hide and seek or it was good guys, bad guys, I'm not sure. Um, but he was playing around uh, with all of his imaginations and I noticed that he ran into our bedroom and uh, I wouldn't mind if it was just Henry, but he had a friend in the house and I didn't want this friend running around my bedroom. It's not necessarily safe. I might have had my straighteners out or I don't want my lamps knocked over or whatever messed up. And so I said, Henry, out here. And I said, Henry, don't go in my room, which usually isn't a problem. He would go in my room all the time. Don't go in my room. I want you to play outside or in your bedroom, but not in my room. And he just looked at me and he snapped and he went, mommy, you're not sharing and he was livid and I had to hold myself from just bursting out in laughter. I felt chastised by my four-year-old for being a naughty girl for not sharing my toys. Uh, but isn't it true that sometimes there's things that we can hold back on and be really protective about and of course we need to use wisdom and it shouldn't be free for all. For I had good reason for not having random kids in my bedroom um, but you know we sometimes can be a bit too tight and a bit too stingy about what it is that we allow for others to access. Um, that you know in kindness it wouldn't be a problem but in stinginess we hold back and we get protective and uh, it's uh, really clear that when we're stingy with one thing often just postures us to be stingy with everything so if we're holding back in generosity uh, with with say finance it will spill out into maybe our time or maybe our words or uh, who we allow around our table, who we include in conversation, or who we extend a hand to. But I wanna make sure around my life that generosity holistically flows all over the place. But often finance is that thing that's at the core. If we're stingy with our finance, then it'll outflow into everything else. So likewise, flip it around one. If we could be generous with our finance, if we wouldn't hold our treasure so tight only for ourselves in fear that maybe we won't have enough another day or you know, wanting to amass heaps just for ourselves, it'll store up the same in our mentality when it comes to our timing. 
how generous we are with our time, with the food in our fridge, with the time that we'll spend in friendships, with who we'll allow in our friendship circle. And I would love for my life to be generous uh, on every occasion, not holding back for myself, but letting go that others may be blessed. And in turn, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I really believe that's true. As I've spent time with others, when I could have just sat at home on my own and had me time, I found myself being energized, being refreshed as I've spent time with others. As I've taken time, perhaps when I don't feel so good, and I've taken time to encourage someone else, it's opened my eyes to so many other good things too, and it's left me feeling encouraged and full. Generosity is a healthy thing for us. It's an essential habit that we hold. And so I want to encourage us as a church to not hold back, especially when it comes to God. Let's not presume that we can maintain our own world and, and store up for ourselves and expect life to start to flourish. I believe that as we share out with others, as we include others, as we are generous with others, as we are generous in every way, we'll start to see God build up and build up and build up and build up in order that we might have influence and impact on the world around us. So I encourage you today, go ahead, let's not be stingy. Maybe it's your week to tithe because you've just got paid. I wanna encourage you, go ahead with that 10%. Don't wait till the end of the month and see if 10% is less. Set your stall out of faith and trust in God at the very start of the month, apportion out that 10%, give it to God. And then with the rest of the month, devise ways to be generous to others with time or with your finance, with your food, with your words, uh, in conversation, uh, with the things that you have, with your car, how far you'll drive or, or going out of your way for someone. Let's allow generosity to spill out from this posture that we set at the start of the month as we bring tithes and offerings to God. So you can go ahead, use the details on the screen to give. If you're part of Vision Builders, don't forget to reference it VB so that we can help you to track it as we go through the month. There's only two months left of this Vision Builders uh, season and we're really excited to see what God is going to do especially as we come towards our digital ministry and uh, also renovating another part of our building in order that we can open the doors as soon as we're allowed to to welcome people in to use the building throughout the week and uh, hopefully for you to use the building throughout the week as well in some fashion. So it's going to be an amazing season as we head towards the end of it. We are praying over every one of you that's still got a way to go on your pledges that God is going to bring provision into your hands that you might be able to sow and fulfill this pledge, but that you'd also have testimony of the goodness and faithfulness of God as you've stepped out in faith with your pledges. So go ahead, keep going. And we're believing with you to see it through to the end. Um, great to see so many people getting involved in Love KL as well. I know there's a number of projects coming up to bless the city over the next couple of weeks through our dinner parties. So go for it, you guys that are putting together emergency packs or uh, essentials packs. I know a bunch of you are running activities and games and stuff for a children's home. I know there's people that are going to donate blood. There's just a bunch of projects happening. So uh, if you're part of Love Kale or you've given generously towards that, then thank you so much. And we'll be able to let you know over the next couple of weeks what it is that we've got up to around the city. For more details, you can head to the website hopecity.my forward slash Love Kale. Uh, but for right now, we've got a treat and I'm so excited about this. Uh, but we've got a special guest speaker for you today. And if you've been in our church a number of years, you've probably heard Pastor Mark Kelsey preach before. And he is one of the early, early originals of the C3 movement, which is now over 560 churches worldwide. And Pastor Mark, along with his wife, Bernadette, came into a C3 church in Sydney uh, about 40 years ago. I think it was like week three or week two, uh, came into the church and just felt like they'd arrived home. And uh, later they would be the first to pioneer out of that church to plant a new one. They went to New York City with their kids, I think back in the 80s um, or early 90s, pioneered a church there before coming back to Sydney and are now part of the global executive team, have been uh, the C3 Church global architects helping us to forge uh, connections and inroads to countries and cities that have not got C3 churches yet. They've been vital uh, connection for many pastors and leaders as they've sought to plant churches and a great wealth of wisdom as well for avoiding pitfalls, for creating healthy family life. And it's also been Joel and my honor and privilege to run with them or help them run C3 Express, which is an incredible boot camp that they're running throughout the world, but especially in Southeast Asia, we've had the honor of just 
camping out for a week with a bunch of people who are emerging in leadership and wanting to plant churches or be effective in ministry. And it's been such an honor to sit alongside them and hear their wisdom, uh, hear it poured out into people and into us too. We've been scribbling notes, uh, but it's been a great honor for us over the last couple of years too. So great friends of our church, great supporters and encouragers of our church. And uh, this is gonna be a great way for us to finish our series, There's Grace For You. And uh, Mark's gonna talk about our relational world and just do some teaching on how we can be fruitful and effective in that as we extend ourselves to our friends and to those around us. So get your notebook if you haven't already, hit share if you haven't already. And uh, if you're gonna tag, it's at Mark Kelsey, K-E-L-S-E-Y. And this is gonna be an amazing, an amazing next 20 minutes or so. So let's, let's take it away. Hey, good morning. So good to see you this morning. Uh, Well, you're seeing me actually. (laughs) Mark Kelsey here. And uh, what an amazing thing. We can still have church while we're online and in this crazy season we're in. And uh, I'm really, really excited to bring this word to you this morning uh, amidst all the uh, uh, craziness and the amazing season that we're in right now. And just trust that that uh, you're in your home or wherever you are this morning watching online, that you're sensing the love of God, sensing God's peace and God's presence, uh, and that uh, you're healthy and you're strong and God is providing all your needs. So I just wanna let you know that we're with you this morning and we're praying for you and, and, and God is for you. Um, this series is, uh, it's, you know, new, normal or not normal. And that's certainly an apt description of what's happening right now. And this morning's focus is really on others. And this whole concept that, that uh, at the Christian life isn't just about us. It really is, once Christ comes into our world, it really is about others. I've, I've written here that the, the gospel is a personal gospel. It does affect us powerfully in a personal way, but it's not an individual gospel. In fact, once we experience it personally, it immediately and profoundly impacts our relationship with other people. The very nature of the gospel is that it flows into our world impacts us and then flows out into other people and the effect on other people. And our personal transformation leads to a transformation of our relationship with others and other people. And of of course, in this season, if anything has given us the opportunity, it's the opportunity to shift from our busy lives to reconnected lives. And that's an amazing thing that we're experiencing right now. Now, as you can imagine, and you may already know, the Bible has a lot to say about relationships and there's much we could cover, but we've only got a short amount of time together. And so I wanna give us this morning five very simple, basic foundational principles in the area of relationships and how we relate to other people in the context of our lives. So here we go, you ready? Number one. I believe that the first and probably the most critical area of relationship with others is that the cross provides us the ability to be reconciled to one another. And we read here in Ephesians chapter two, one of my all time favorite pieces of scripture. And I'm actually gonna be reading from verse 14. And it says here, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups and has destroyed the barrier the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose, watch this, was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. I love this bit. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. So here we see in the scripture, this concept, which I believe is foundational to the beginning of our relationship with other people is that in the cross, our relationship with one another changes profoundly. And then in the context of this scripture is really talking about various groups, different races, different cultures, different groups within the current 
place of biblical context in that particular situation it was the Jews and the Gentiles but of course it relates just as much to today and in, in our current season around the world where there is so much division and tension between races between cultures between people groups that really the answer is that as we discover our identity in Christ he doesn't make one group preferred over the other he says no in the cross I have created one new humanity. And once we discover that, then what we discover is not only are we forgiven before God, but also that He gives us, us the power to forgive. And that breaks down every division, every piece of hostility, every piece of unforgiveness. And I think the key here, the key word, that if I can summarize it, is really God gives us the power to forgive. And I believe that is the... It's like a platform from which every other relationship and every peace and, and understanding of our ability to relate to others is founded on. Powerful thing, forgiveness. Okay, number two. So the first one is reconciled to others. Secondly is regarding others. Uh, there's a great passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 22. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, were attempting to trick Jesus and catch him up on his understanding of the law. And it says at one point in Matthew 22, and verse 36, that a expert of the law came to him and said, Jesus, and I can imagine the tone of his voice, and it was probably had sarcasm in it. Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? Now, just on a side note, uh, there were 613 laws in the Old Testament that the Jewish culture and the Jewish people attempted to keep. And imagine even knowing that number of laws, but the complexity of what that meant in terms of how to follow God and how to obey God, life from a religious point of view and, and following God become, became very, very complex. But I believe the principle here is powerful because Jesus responded and said this, that love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And, and he said, on these two commands, all the Old Testament law and prophets hang. Or in other words, he summarized all that complexity, all those things and understandings of law and commandments and how to respond into a very, very simple concept. There's love God love people as you love yourself. And and look, I think this brings into play this issue of self-love, which has become a very strong focus in modern society. But the Bible does talk about self-love. We are called to love ourselves, but we are called to love God first. Out of that love of God and to God, we then get a clear identity of who we are and we begin to love ourselves. And out of that flow of loving ourselves, we then love others. And that simple command. So the key concept here is moving from complexity to simplicity. And if we simplify the Christian life down to those basic things, love God and love others, then I think we're going to be uh, go a long way to really have healthy, balanced and a kingdom based relationships in our world. All right, number three. So we've talked about reconciling. We've talked about regarding others. Third principle here is relating to others. How do we do this? What is, what is the kingdom foundation? What, is, what are some of the kingdom principles of, of the mechanics, if you like, or the, or the heart behind relationships with one another? I believe the key is in an incredible passage of Scripture in Philippians chapter 2. And it's actually, once again, talking about Jesus. And it says, I'm going to read from, this, uh, from the passage here, Ephesians 2 verse 1. Uh, Therefore, if, any of, have, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, I love this, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but to each of you, the interests of others. It's an amazing passage. And it goes on the next verses and says this, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, 
who being the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. Oh my gosh. It goes on and talks about that he humbled himself even to the point of death on a cross. I think the principle here is one of the keys to kingdom relationships is humility. And I love the fact that Christ was the prime example of that. And that I, I believe the foundation of humility means that we regard others as more valuable, even though they aren't, but we regard them as more valuable and esteem them even more than ourselves. What that does is brings a flow of kingdom life and kingdom hope and kingdom connection into our relationships. And I love the fact that it says he made himself nothing. Of course, Jesus wasn't nothing. He was God. And I think if we, are, if we know our security in God, we can actually lower ourselves in a, a spirit of humility. And that, I believe, causes us to have an incredible connection with our relationships with other people. Key word, humility. Hope that encourages you this morning. And the fourth powerful principle here is number four, releasing others. Now, once again, talking about Jesus, I love the fact that he not only lived the example of leading what healthy kingdom relationships was, but then took it to another level. Now, in Luke 3, uh, verse 21, we see the story of Jesus having an encounter with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. It says the heavens opened when he got baptized. The Holy Spirit was poured out upon him. Soon after that, in the next chapter, Luke 4, we see the story of Jesus being released to his calling, released to his purpose and his ministry. And he proclaims and begins to uh, quote out of Isaiah 61, Spirit of God is upon me for the Lord has anointed me. So he gets released into his calling. But it doesn't stop there. The very next chapter, Luke chapter 5, it says that Jesus began to see others. In one passage, in one version of the gospel, another gospel that says that Jesus saw Andrew and his brother Peter. So one of the keys, I believe, to healthy relationships and focusing on others is that we begin to see others that our eyes are opened, not just to us relating to them and to us being friends with them, but actually as we mature in Christ, we begin, begin to become agents of their calling, agents of their release into the callings of God upon their lives. And um, uh, it, I love it because this is a story of uh, Jesus encouraging uh, the disciples to go out and fish and they they caught nothing by themselves. But as he released them into that, they caught a huge catch. Now, at the end of that passage of Scripture, uh, Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, I'm going to make you fishers of men. So I think one of the key principles of kingdom relationships for us this morning as we look at, into the Scriptures is that we become the, the releases of God's purpose giftings and callings upon other people and we become agents of their future in God the ability to see others and I suppose the question to us this morning is who are you seeing who, who are you viewing who are you taking along on the journey of God with you because as we do that together I believe together we can uh, become agents of life and hope and change in the world that God has called us to all right number five and as you can see, it's a, a, yeah, it's, these are all our words. The, the fifth one is reaching others. God has called us not just to release others, but He has called us to reach others. It's, as I look into the Scriptures, I see we often focus on Acts chapter 2 in the New Testament. And Acts 2 is a powerful thing, as you know, the birthing of the church. And in the birthing of the church, incredible things happened. The Spirit was poured out upon the disciples. Uh, the, the church was birthed. The presence of God came. People met Christ. The city was impacted. Uh, and it was an incredible stage and season in the life of the church. But what happened was the church, in many ways, stayed within the city of Jerusalem. It never broke out of that city. It never went beyond the boundaries and the borders of that city into other cities and other parts of the world. And in Acts chapter 8, 
we see something that took place. In the end of Acts 7, a persecution broke out. It was a very painful thing. Uh, Stephen was martyred. Uh, the church began to be persecuted. And something that was that the enemy meant for evil, God actually turned around for good. Because what happened was, as, as the church got persecuted, the church scattered. It broke out of the boundaries of the, that one city. And it says that the church went into other cities and other countries and the gospel spread beyond the walls of their current experience. Because I believe in this current situation, uh, it has forced us to rediscover community outside of our physical gatherings. And even in a bad situation, even in a situation where, where of recent times things have not been pleasant and, and people unfortunately have been unwell and there's been pressure on the economy and we haven't been able to meet as a church community. But what it has forced us to do is to, to rediscover that Christ-like church community out into the community. And I don't think that's such a bad thing. You know, in spite of the trial that the early church went through, and in fact, in spite of the trial that we're going through, it represents what they went through. You know, Acts 2 was the day of Pentecost. In Acts 8 was the day of persecution. In Acts 2, it was the church gathered. But in Acts 8, it was the church scattered. In Acts 2, it was the church established, but in Acts 8, it was the church expanded out into the boundaries of other cities. In Acts 2, it was a spirit powered church, uh, sorry, the spirit poured out on the church, but in Acts 8, spirit flowed through the church and out into other cities. And I believe we're living in a day in which God has called us to really look over the walls of our, of, of our church, even our church gatherings, and into the needs of our community and see our lives being a blessing and a focus on other people. And as we see the needs, the hurts, the pains, and the things that the people are going through, we are that salt and we are that light out into the church community that God has called us to. And this is that season. And even now, as we, you're watching online and you're in your homes, God wants the blessing of God to touch you this week as you go to work or maybe even your work uh, place is actually online from home. I believe that we can still be an influence. We can bring light. We can bring hope. We can bring the presence of God. So I trust this, uh, this message has helped a little bit this morning as we have, see this focus on other people. God has called us to be the blessing of God and the hope of God to the world. Maybe this morning uh, you're listening to this message for the first time. You've maybe never been on online church. Maybe you've never had a church experience. Maybe you've never had an experience of an encounter with God. I trust that this morning something went into your heart and uh, inspired you to maybe reach out to God in a way. Or maybe you're watching this morning online and you, you're thinking to yourself, you know what? My heart has grown cold and distant from God. I want to share with you this morning that God loves you. He is for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. So if you're here and you're, and you're watching and you're listening and you want to receive Christ, or maybe you want to return to that fresh connection with God, the Father, through the Holy Spirit, why don't you, you uh, say this prayer with me this morning as we finish. Father in heaven, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that Christ died for me. I thank you that your presence is with me. And right now, I receive your love, your forgiveness, your hope, and your eternity into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, Father, I, I pray the blessing of God into every person watching today, Lord. Where, at whatever place they're at, whether they're struggling physically, maybe emotionally, Maybe there are financial needs in your world. I declare God's favor, God's grace, God's blessing, God's hope upon you right now. Whatever, if you're by yourself in your house or you're with a bunch of other people, I declare the favor of God, the blessing of God, the peace of God and the hope of God into your home and your household right now. And I declare your week blessed in Jesus' name. Hey, it's been so good being with you and sharing the word of God with you this morning. God bless you. See you soon. 
Fantastic, what an amazing message. And it's such an encouragement to us to be effective with those that are around us. And I love those five keys, gonna be taking those and chewing over them over this week and are trying to implement them into our world. Make sure you're doing that, whatever God is speaking to you about. Don't just walk away thinking, oh, that was great. Uh, let's think of practical ways that we can apply this wisdom. And uh, the gospels are incredible for giving us insight on how to live life effectively. We have the example of Jesus himself and also his disciples and all that the early church did in those early days. And so let's let's be practices of the word of God. And so whatever's spoken to you today over those five keys, whatever Mark has uh, brought, been able to bring revelation to you about, let's this week, let's be diligent about putting it into practice and we're gonna start to see fruitfulness around our world and our relationships too. Thanks so much for being a part of today's service. If you did pray that prayer at the end, you're just deciding that you're gonna go for it with Jesus, we would love to celebrate that with you and also resource you. So hopefully you click the QR code. If you haven't, there's still time, uh, but let us know that you prayed that prayer or you made that decision. Perhaps you're coming back to God or it's the very first time that you've prayed it. Our team would love to get alongside you in prayer. Uh, get a Bible in your hand if you need one. Help you out, invite you to Alpha. We've got it kicking off again in October, this opportunity to explore the basics of the Christian faith. It would be perfect for you if you just prayed that prayer for you today. So go ahead and get in touch. Whatever platform you're on, send us a DM, write it in the chat, uh, reach out to us. And uh, you can also head over to our website, hopecity.my forward slash hello. It's never been easier. Uh, we've also got a four part new to Hope City course too. So if you're trying to find a church to call home or you're new to this whole thing, you wanna know what it's all about, uh, then you can also reach out to us on that slash hello address. And we would love to get those videos into your hands so that you can take a look at those even while we're in this online season. Well, church, there's no dinner parties on this Wednesday. It is our season break as we go through September, end of season two already. And so we've not got dinner parties throughout the month of September, but there are some Love KL projects happening. So if you've got some FOMO or you wanna hang out with some people and be a part of something significant, uh, then you can head over to hopecity.my forward slash love KL for the details on all the projects. And there's an opportunity for you to reach out to the team leaders on each of those as well. So go ahead and be a part of Love KL and like I said earlier we'll be letting everyone know about what we've been up to and how we've been able to impact the local community of KL through this lockdown season but for everybody thank you for joining in service thank you for being a part of it today if you're Instagramming tag us at Hope City KL we'd love to know where you've been watching today who you've been with and uh, what the service has meant to you let us know the bits that stood out for you and I uh, would love to encourage you in your faith over this season so the best way we can do that is in community with each other so don't stay quiet through September we'll be here every Sunday with our service at 11 a.m. and then available on demand and our dinner parties alphas team nights everything will be relaunching in October so we can't wait to have you a part of that have the best week ever take care and uh, we'll see you next Sunday God bless